Hello, everybody, and welcome to the absolutely, completely random podcast for Saturday, September 24th, 2016. I'm your host, Andrew Rhodes. Man, this uh, man, that last week just really pissed by, didn't it? <laughs> it feels like it wasn't even a week ago. Uh, today, I'm talking about the passing of C. Martin Croker. I want to talk about how Toonami is getting the royal shaft from Adult Swim yet again. I'm talking about a real-life Transformer. The new season of South Park, because I think I forgot to last week. I'm not sure. I don't remember if I talked about it or not. I'm talking about an Inverse.com article that got brought to my attention, uh, which is really creepy. I want to talk about Conker's Bad Fur Day. It's a game that I would never have been allowed to play growing up. It was marketed to kids. I want to talk about why Sailor Jupiter is my favorite of the Sailor Scouts, at least in my opinion, why she's the best, and a few other things. But... Before we get started with all that, like always, I have sponsors that help pay the bills because you know those bills got to be paid. Got to make the cheddar and uh, can't make the cheddar without the sponsor. Sadly, it's still me, but you never know. Something good could come of it. So, here's the sponsor's message. Hello, this is Andrew from A Roads 2012 on eBay. Are you looking for neat, rare, and unusual items? Some stuff that's vintage? Trading cards? Or just odd, or just odd stuff in general, basically. Well, if you are, swing by my eBay page. I have a majority of stuff. Fact to be, I recently just put up some vintage and old school video games, and by vintage I mean like PlayStation One games. But hey, they're still old to me. So swing by my page. That's all lowercase a r h o a d s hyphen twenty twelve on eBay. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Otaku Roads. All right, so uh, a bit of sad news to start uh, the week off here. Uh, last Saturday night into early Sunday morning, uh, Clay Martin Croker uh, passed away. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with uh, who that is, uh, if you ever saw Space Ghost Coast to Coast, uh, it was a really great show Cartoon Network had on years ago. Uh, he did the voices of not only Zorak, but also the voices, also the voice of Moltar, and he did the voice for Moltar as the original host of Toonami. Uh, it was brought, it was made public uh, to everybody via Adult Swim's Twitter account, uh, and Toonami immediately put it up then on their Facebook page and their Twitter account that he had passed away uh, at the age of 54. Uh, first off, I want to say that, damn, that, that's young. Uh, seriously. Uh, but yeah, Adult Swim wouldn't be what it is without him, or at least it wouldn't have started off. And uh, a lot of the other stuff, so... I'm not that much of a religious person, I just wanted to touch on this today because... He will be missed. Deeply, he will be missed. Um, so, i just like to take a moment uh, to remember him. It's like a nice little moment of silence. Rest in peace, Clay. Rest rest in peace. All right. Well, let's uh, shift off the sad and get on to the goods. Like I said, I just wanted to touch on it. There really isn't much to say. I mean, the person passed away. There's not really much to say. But let's uh, get off the sad and let's go to something that kind of boils my piss a little bit. Uh, swing the opposite direction here. Adult Swim uh, got screwed over this week. Uh, they announced via, I believe it was Twitter and Facebook that they are losing the 8 o'clock hour starting October 1st. Uh, so Toonami immediately ended up going on their uh, not only their Twitter page, but their Facebook page, and immediately telling everybody, yep, because Adult Swim's getting cut by an hour, we're losing the 11.30 time slot. So we're back to 12 to 3.30. So that just kind of sucks for a multitude of reasons. Uh, mostly because... They really worked hard to try to get that 11.30 slot back. Now, for anybody out there that's trying to keep up with this, uh, Adult Swim came back, or, sorry, Toonami came back in 2012, I want to say. Yeah, that's, yeah, I believe that's when it was. Uh, I can't really double check it today. My internet is acting screwy. But yeah, uh, Toonami came back. It was an, originally an April Fool's prank by Adult Swim. Uh, they originally started doing their what they their prank that they did the year before, uh, showing the room 
a movie that I've never seen, nor do I plan to see. And then all of a sudden you flash to the Absolution deck and you have Tom, the host of Toonami, going, oh, hey, Adult Swim, you know, we got the results back, you have April Fool's, and uh, he went on to announce that week's episode of Bleach, and then for the rest of the night it was nothing but old school Toonami programming, including uh, two black and white shows there near the end of the night. So it was just really neat. It was cool. But at the same time, it was just something that you didn't really expect because, you know, it's just not something that anybody was expecting. Then it just started an uproar, and Cartoon Network and Adult Swim came out the next day and said, you want it back? Let us know. Uh, and everybody just went to town. Uh, you could go on Cartoon Network's site and tweet them. You could send them a message via their site and say, yeah, we want it back. You'll bring back Toonami, bring back Toonami. Then it came back, I believe it was May. Not even a month later. It was like May they announced, yeah, it's coming back, and it came back in May. And it just came back with a vengeance, and the fans were ecstatic. Even I was ecstatic. I was happy that it was back, because that's what Saturday nights needed. It needed Toonami. It needed a decent programming block, something that nobody could say, yeah, we didn't have this before. So it's just really cool to know that, you know, we have that. But then things started going downhill fast. Uh, Toonami got a neat facelift, a facelift uh, with the new design, new colors, background stuff, and everything else. So it all got, you know, nice redo. And we had Tom 5 then. And that's when the shit started hitting the fan. Viewership started going down in the wee early hours. Um, they premiered Space Dandy on a New Year's... I think it was New Year's Day that year. Yeah, or at least a Saturday. Yeah, I think it was New Year's Day. Uh, January 1st, I think it was, when they premiered Space Dandy at 11.30, which marked, uh, hey, we're getting the 11.30 time slot, so now we're six and a half hours instead of just six hours. And then all of a sudden... Uh, then they announced The Intruder 2 coming out, which was the sequel to the original, very first Total Immersion event, which was really cool, by the way. And uh, then all of a sudden, it comes out, oh, yeah, um, Toonami's losing uh, half an hour this week. The fans were a little pissed, like, okay, what the hell is going on? Why are they losing half an hour? And then they're like, okay, well, maybe it's just, you know, Something happened that, you know, maybe they lost the show or something or... Okay. Uh, then it came out later on that Sunday or Monday that they were going to be losing a whole hour. And not even a couple days later, then they just came right out and said, Yeah, you know what? They came out and said, Toonami's going to be done at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, we lost up to 3.30 in the morning. There's nothing we can do. So it's midnight to 3.30. We apologize. And the fans started having bitch fits. I was one of them. And then I had my friends just started up on me with, well, they don't have anything good on anymore. They don't have any of the decent anime series anymore. Why should we care? You can watch them all online, blah, blah, blah. It's the old school factor. Uh, that's what I cared about. It was the old school factor. So, with all this, starting October 1st, Toonami's going uh, from... Midnight to 3.30. But then, earlier today, as I found this out, ha ha ha, uh, it was this morning, actually, uh, Toonami announced that because the license, or the contract, I should say, for Parasite is coming to an end, they are getting a special extension on October 1st. They will be ending at 4.30 in the morning so they can air the last three episodes of Parasite. So instead of ending at 3.30 in the morning like they were supposed to, they're getting extended by an hour, basically have three episodes of Parasite to end the entire Parasite second run before the contract expires, and they get extended a little bit. So for me, that's good. Uh, why it got shut down in the first place and it got cut down so drastically... Adult Swim was saying that it wasn't bringing in the ratings that they were hoping it was going to bring. And a lot of the fans just started up on that, like, well, it's on at 3.30. It was mostly the 3.30 in the morning crowd. And I could see their point to a degree. And I do mean to a degree. 
because you have the fans that are pissed off that the shows are airing that early in the morning, that they're either working the third shift or they're DVRing it and they're watching it in the morning that Sunday. So Adult Swim said that because of that, that's why they were cutting it. But what they were replacing it with is what I like to call pretty much what Adult Swim's programming is now, stoner programming. Uh, here's what I mean by that. Stoner programming is a term that I'm trying to coin because I don't think anybody's come up with it yet. And it basically means programming that you got to be baked high as a kite to enjoy. Uh, and I, I guarantee you, if you want to ask somebody how high would you have to be to enjoy this, uh, send Ian Ferguson of the CU Podcast a message. I guarantee you he will call back to his high school days and probably say, yeah, I was toasted a couple times because he's openly admitted it. He'll, you'd have to be probably his level of toasted, if not higher, just to understand what the hell is going on. Uh, the last program I remember watching on Adult Swim in the early, early, early morning hours was in 2014, before I had my one-night temp job, which did not last more than a night. And uh, it basically made no sense to me. It started out like a commercial... And then all of a sudden, it's not a commercial anymore. Now all of a sudden, it's an actual program that's making no sense. A lady gets run over by her van that's being driven by herself. She drags herself to her house to see that the her that ran her down is now living with her family. And the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, this makes no sense to me. And I'm like, yep, this is stoner programming. You gotta be high to watch this shit. And... That's basically what it got replaced with. And if you want prime examples of stoner programming, uh, I can give them to you. Uh, the first three that come off the top of my head... Um, oh, God. It's been a while since I watched it, so I don't even know if they're on anymore. But um, there was a crappy medical... Oh, yeah, it's, uh, um, Children's Hospital. You have that. Uh, the name of the other one escapes me, but I, I can vaguely see it and that doesn't do you out there listening to me any good um so yeah i guess i can only name two off the top of my head because i can't think of that the name of that second one and it'll come to me and that'll drive me up that'll drive me nuts it'll come to me then but you have uh children's hospital god i can't think of that second one and um then you also had tim and eric awesome show great job that show to me is one that you gotta be high. And he, oh, um, oh, oh, it just came to me. It just came to me. Um, the uh, Dr. Steve Bull show. Um, now you see it or something, or look this way, or whatever the hell that piece of crap was with Dr. Steve Bull. Uh, I think it was John C. Riley played the character. That, you have to be high to watch that. You gotta be high to watch Children's Hospital, and you gotta be high. To watch Tim and Eric Awesome Show, great job. There were a lot of other ones too that were in there, but those were the ones that came off the top of my head. And I just had to think, and all of a sudden it came to me. Oh yeah, that's right, because he was in that thing, and I, and I still can't think of the name of it. But that's what it was—the one with him in it. But yeah, those are stoner programming. That's what Toonami got screwed over for. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, originally they put King of the Hill on at five thirty, and then they put it on at five and five thirty. I had no problem with King of the Hill. I grew up watching King of the Hill. I can sit through those no problem and go, okay, uh, okay, this is fine. It's just a watered-down version of The Simpsons. Who cares? Uh, I know it came from the same people that made uh, Beavis and Butthead, but to me it's just a watered-down version of The Simpsons. It's fine. So that's basically why... Uh, Toonami got screwed in the first place. They're saying because it was ratings, so then they put the stoner programming on. So we're basically going right back to getting the stoners high so that they can enjoy themselves while they're watching God knows what at 4 in the morning. Which, it, it does bother me to a point that they did it that way, but at the same time, you have to realize they had a reason for doing it. It was stupid, their reason, but they had a reason for doing it, but like I said, it was stupid. So, starting October 1st, Adult Swim will be starting at 9 p.m. instead of 8, and Toonami will be starting at midnight, 
And on October 1st only, as far as I can tell anyway, October 1st only, Toonami will end at 4.30 in the morning so that they can end and show the last three episodes of Parasite before the contract expires. Yeah. So that's uh, really great. All right. On to something that will definitely make people uh, love this. Love a lot of stuff. Anybody that's a huge fan of Michael Bay's Transformers will probably definitely get a kick out of this because now we're one step closer to basically having Cybertron on our doorstep. And for anybody out there that hears the paper shuffling, if it comes over the mic and over my voice, yep, because I swear I kept forgetting stuff last week and I did a little printout of stuff so that I'd have the uh, information right here with me and I'm trying to fold it to save on paper. Because I can reuse some of this. Because I like to reuse and recycle. And no, I did not learn that from Captain Planet. I learned that from a gigantic bear that danced around a recycling bin singing a stupid song when I was like six. So, uh, Turkish engineers made a real-life drivable, B- drivable BMW Transformer. And you thought the Transformers franchise was fictional, but it's real. Uh, well, okay, they don't battle... Uh, the robot won't battle. It doesn't move uh, in robot mode. It has no weapons. Yeah, it doesn't battle Decepticons. It doesn't fly. And it doesn't well move, not even in robot mode. But you can drive it via remote control. Uh, now, this opens up the doors, in, in my opinion. This opens up the doors. If they could actually make it so the robot moved in robot mode, as in it transforms. Now I didn't watch the real uh, real time video, so it may take it like five to ten minutes to transform. I don't know because I know they sped it up in a in a GIF, so I don't know how long it would take. But this could be the start of a whole new sport. Uh, the Turkish company that made it is called, and that's why I printed out the article or at least the text from the article, so that I would not mispronounce this. Lee Letrons. Or Litrons. I don't know how what the pronunciation is of it. And I apologize to the Turkish people. Because I am definitely butchering that. And I apologize profusely. So, yeah. It's really cool. But if they could just get it to move in robot mode. And still be remote controlled. We could have a whole new sport. A small NASCAR style ring. Drivable remote control vehicles that transform into robots controlled by one person and you have them battle out to the last one stands. You call it robot battle racing. I guarantee you it will put NASCAR out in the pasture and it will definitely usher in a whole new line for everyone else because I, even I would be gung-ho to get that, watch it, and everything else. I'd be happy for that. So there is that. It's kind of entertaining. But you never know. Uh, You can check out their website for more details on it. Uh, They don't have a cost in the article, at least the text that I have from the article. But they're assuming it's not going to be cheap. Uh, But they do ask that if anybody, at least to ask them on the uh, editor's behalf, I guess, if they are willing to make a life-size Optimus Prime. Uh, that would be pretty cool if they'd be making if they'd make a life size Optimus Prime. I could see a lot of people buying that. But yeah, nonetheless, it's definitely something cool. Uh, definitely shows technology is getting more and more advanced, and that we as a human race are basically making fictional uh, non-fictional at this point. All we got to do is build a matrix of leadership. Actually, have Decepticons give them sentient. Make them sentient, and we basically have Terminator level of screwed. So, yeah, there's that. This portion of the absolutely completely random podcast is brought to you by A Roads 2012 on eBay. For all your trading card, video game, and oddity needs, check out A Roads 2012 on eBay. Okay, so the new season of South Park uh, started up two weeks ago. This was the second week. Uh, I don't remember if I talked about this last week or not. I know that uh, the episode was kind of weird. It was strange and unusual. 
Ever since last season, they have the entire season going on an arc. So it's basically one continuous story broken up every week. Broken up into an episode a week. Um, so this week's episode was basically the continuation of last week's episode uh, where you have Skank Hunt 42. Who, if you saw last week's episode, I mean, I don't really want to do spoilers on this, but if you saw it, you know who it is. I I'm not going to say it just for the sake of if you haven't seen it. If you have, you know. If you haven't, I'm not going to ruin it for you. Because I know a lot of people probably DVR'd it thinking, you know what, I'll watch it over the weekend. Uh, so yes, you have Skank Hunt 42. It's going around causing all sorts of hell on the internet, mostly trolling on uh, the South Park Elementary message boards. And the girls... Are swearing to God it's Cartman. The boys are swearing to God it's Cartman. Well, the girls are basically just saying it's one of the boys. The boys are swearing to God it's Cartman. And this week, I honestly thought this was going to take a different turn than what it did. I, I, I really, really do. Uh, this week, they decided they were going to put an end to Cartman once and for all. Now, I'm interpreting it as, oh my God. They're finally going to kill the little fat bastard. After 20 years, after 20 seasons, basically, they're finally going to do the impossible. They're going to put that fat fucker out of his misery. Nope, they just break all of his electronic shit. That's basically it. They took him to a cabin in the woods to bust his stuff. Buried it in the ground, and that, that was it. I honestly thought they were going to kill him. I really, really did. That's the way it seemed to have gone. That's the way it seemed to have uh, went. But, nope, didn't happen that way. It just broke his stuff. There's your spoiler alert. And it still didn't bring an end to it because it's not Cartman. There's your spo there's your big twist. It's like a M. Night Shyamalan thing. What a twist. Yeah, what a twit, basically. But, uh, yeah, so it that's how the episode went this week. Uh, Cartman officially lost all of his electronic stuff. All the guys thought that they finally did it, that they finally put uh, this evil that is Cartman out of its misery. And it turns out Cartman honestly was innocent, and now they're all feeling horrible about it, but they know they can't take back what they've done. Well, yeah, no shit, they can't take back what they've done. They knew what they were doing when they got in. They basically knew what they were doing, and they made their bets on it. So uh, this coming week, it's going to be week number three, episode three for season 20. I can't wait to see what happens. This is starting to, th this is now starting to take a better turn than it did the first week because the first week just seemed really stupid. Um, I, I really wasn't that uh, fond of it. I was getting a little confused. And I saw people leaving comments on the Facebook page like, oh, yeah, they did it again. Oh, man, their talent is just so wonderful. They have yet to make a horrible episode. Um, Human Sentai Pad. From a few seasons ago. That gave me nightmares. That was not a great episode. Human Sentai Pad. There you go. So, yeah. So, you can check out the uh, new season of South Park on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock on Comedy Central. You can also check it out on the... I think they have... Yeah, it's a Cartman South Park uh, website where you can watch the episodes the day after they premiere. So, yep. Check it out. Um, look forward to seeing it, seeing how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't go back to being stupid. I'm really, really hoping. So, yep, here's kudos to that, and good luck to South Park, and hopefully they do better. All right. Moving on, new topic. This came to my attention via a Facebook post, uh, not to me personally, but for one of the pages that I liked on Facebook. It was an Inverse.com article titled, Anime for Those Who Don't Watch Anime. And this is the one that all week I have been waiting to go off on. And you don't know the patience I have. Think Master Roshi from Team Four Star. You don't know the patience I have. I was really losing my shit this week waiting for this. And I apologize if my uh, language has offended anybody tonight. But uh, it's going to get a little more blue with this topic because this one really pissed me off. So, here we go. The uh, article is basically about a list of anime that will hopefully guide potential viewers into the expansive medium teeming with great animation, character stories, and music. That's a line right from the article. Because they put down that it couldn't be off-putting, especially with the unfortunate few stumble 
a little too early into the world of perverted, usually associated with Japanese animation. I want to stop them right there for a moment and go off on that, if I may, for a moment. You're going to have perverted stuff no matter what medium or what country you're looking at. Uh, the U.S. does perverted stuff, too. You can't say it's just Japan. The U.S. does it, too. Japan's just a little more subtle about it than the U.S. is. And I mean that. You compare a U.S. cartoon to a Japanese anime car to a Japanese anime series, and I know, I know I caught myself, to a Japanese anime series, I apologize, Japanese anime series, and you will see that they are more subtle in how they do it. So the list starts off with uh, Miyazaki films. That I'll agree with. Because uh, if you're going to come at this like uh, trying to teach somebody how to swim, you don't want to uh, shove them headfirst into the deep end of the pool. They're going to drown. Uh, that's a goddamn given. They're just going to drown. So, yeah, Miyazaki films, I'll agree on that. That is a great way to get your uh, feet wet. Definitely a wonderful way to get your... Uh, you know, to get a feel for the anime style, for the art style, and everything else. Granted, they got, you know, a large budget, but still, they're not bad. Uh, if you want to go by ones that I would recommend for that, um, Ponyo, Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away, just to name a few. Ones I would avoid, though, out of that, because there are a couple. Now, it's just my opinion that you could avoid them. You can watch them if you want. I watched them. I wasn't a fan of them. I didn't like how they went. So, yeah, to me, they're ones you can avoid. Uh, they would be Princess Mononoke and Howl's Moving Castle, both of which I really wasn't that big a fan of. So, you have that. Then the article, then the list goes to Eden of the East. Yep, I'll agree on that. That's a good one to get your feet wet in, too, because it's not really confusing. It's not really out there, but it's definitely something that is entertaining. Only downside, though, is that if you want to watch the whole series, you better be tracking down the three movies that they came out with. And the problem is only one of them is available online to watch. So you're kind of screwed on that end. But either way, yeah, I agree on that one. Um, then they have Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh... Yeah, over the original, yeah, I would say that's pretty good, but I wouldn't recommend that for newbies. Uh, that's more or less after you've watched a few series, you got a couple under your belt, and I mean like short little 13-episode series, then I would go into the big boys. Like, you know, start off with like 13 to 26-episode series, like uh, Eden of the East, uh, Tiger and Bunny. Um, oh, crap, I just watched a couple. Um... Uh, I my me strawberry eggs stuff like that. I would yeah yeah you know stuff like that. I would go and start off with those, then get into the ones that are more than that amount. Of, then you get into the ones that are higher up count on higher up count on the episodes. I apologize for talking today. I'm a little tired. So yeah, I would do that and then go from there. But otherwise, it's not bad. Uh, Steins Gate. Mm, no. No. Uh, if you want one to watch that isn't Steins Gate, I recommend Robotic Notes. Uh, if you want a series that's definitely entertaining, definitely new, and definitely strange, Robotics Notes. Definitely would watch that one. Excuse me one second. Oh, that's good power. Rate. Sorry, I, I get thirsty when I talk a lot. Yeah, but Stein Gate, Steins Gate is definitely not one that I would recommend for noobs. Mostly for the fact that it, it, that one's pretty much on a level that it, it's not something that I would recommend for noobs. Now, if you have friends that are new that have watched anime series and they recommend it for you, if you're watching it with them, fine, because they can kind of help guide you through some of the episode. But if you're watching it for yourself for the first time, no, 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 no. I would not recommend it. I do not recommend it. No. Uh, then they have one here, Mushishi. I've never heard of it, so I can't say anything about it. Can't say anything good or bad. I couldn't even find the trailer for it online, and God knows I tried. Uh, even the little ad, the little blurb they have in here about it, it is an. They say this is an enticing collection of uh, 
begins that detail the encounter of the mysterious being known as Mushi the 19, in 19th century Japan. This one's great for watching one episode at a time, especially because it's very subdued and meditative. Always leaving a satisfying calm in the wake of each arc. Definitely a good for introspective or existential moods. Uh, never saw it. Don't know. Not sure. Yeah. Nope. Really not sure on that. So, on to the next one on the list. Cowboy Bebop. Uh, oh, God, yes. I recommend that. Uh, that is one of the pinnacle sci-fi anime series you could possibly have. Uh, it is one that uh, Steve Bloom, who does, and I swear it was him yet, and I could probably be wrong, but I don't think I am, uh, the voice of Tom from Toonami did the voice of Spike Spiegel. That is a very well done series. Uh, the movie that they have out with it, very well done. That is, a, that, that is a series that I highly recommend. It is an old school one. But it is definitely good. It is a classic. And I mean, it is a cult classic, in my opinion. And I guarantee you on a few other people's, it is a cult classic. So that one I agree with. That That's a good one for uh, beginners. Gargantua on the planet, on the Verdius planet. No. And I want to stress why I say no. I, I don't mean no. I mean hell no. I fell asleep watching the trailer. I shit you not, I fell asleep watching the trailer on this. I got it at Walmart, at my local Walmart. It was uh, about 10 bucks. I thought, hey, it's a new anime series. I've never heard of it. Oh, cool, it's got a mech in it. Hey, this should be cool. I like mech anime series. No. No, 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 no. The trailer put me to sleep. I couldn't follow it. Uh, even the little blurb they have here... It's pretty much almost word for word what's on the back of the what's on the back of the box because it was a complete series. It's only like thirteen episodes. No, I, I don't recommend that. I mean, if you want to try and watch it, be my guest. But as far as me, I couldn't even get past the trailer. I sold the thing, brand new, unopened. I sold it because I couldn't watch it. I, I couldn't even watch the trailer. It put me to sleep. I'm like, you know what? I didn't even open it. I'm gonna sell it. I'm gonna get rid of that. That that sucked. Um, next on the list, Samurai Camp, Samurai Champloo. Oh, I don't even know where to start with this. To, to be honest with you, I really don't know where to start with this. Every time I hear this, I keep thinking somebody's saying Samurai Shampoo. And that sounds pretty accurate because every time I see this, it feels like it's burning my eyes. Uh, it's really not one that's on my list, but hey, you might like it. But as far as something for noobs, I really wouldn't. Uh, I really wouldn't get too uh, hung up on it. There are a few better samurai anime series out there. Uh, samurai Seven would be much better to start off with than Samurai Champloo. And the one, the last one on the list, and the one that boils my piss the most. Death Note. I want to start off on this rant. Uh, just going small here. I want to start off. Good God, no! Death Note is not an anime series that you have for noobs. No way, shape, or form of hell is it a series that you have for noobs. No, 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 no. And I mean that. No. So... What is Death Note? Well, if you don't know what Death Note is, you've been living under a rock. And just Google it. I I'm just going to just Google it. Trust me. There is death in this. And I'm not talking death like, oh, the person dies, then they're magically resurrected. No. There is some gruesome death in this. Uh, there is a girl that gets burned in a fire in the back of a truck. There is a guy that has his head basically caved in by a baseball bat. And all because this pretentious little twerp gets his hands on a book that if you write the person's name in it and you picture them in your mind as you're writing their name, six minutes and 40 seconds later, they will die. And he's using this power to become God. That is not a series that I would recommend for beginners. No. That will turn them off. I know you want to stay away from the touchy-feely, uh, sensitive children's crap, but 
that is not a series that you have newbies go on. I watched the whole thing twice. I owned the whole entire series on DVD. I sold it. Because after I watched it the second time, I took a real good look at myself and went, why the fuck do I still have this? It is a gigantic, and I'm going to say it, this is what I'm leading up to, it is a mind fuck. That is all it is. It is a grade A mind fuck. And they know it. It is not something that I recommend no way, no how, no. That is not something that is worth watching for beginners. That will turn them off. If you want something horrible and gruesome, death-wise, anime series, there is an entire list. WatchMojo.com did a whole list. Top 10 gruesome anime deaths. Look that up. Any of those series from that list, watch it. I think there was a Death Note one in there, but watch those. If you want sick, horrifying death, there you go. Right there, you got it. Otherwise, if you're new to the if you're new to the whole anime world, this is kryptonite. Avoid it at all costs. Get a few series under your belt before you watch this. Yeah, it's binge worthy, but get a few series under your belt before you watch it. I binge watched it, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know whether I was coming or going. So yeah. But they end the article, hopefully these options will spawn new interest in a sometimes misunderstood medium. It's not misunderstood. The problem is, is that you have mainstream media like CNN and all these other ones bitching and complaining, saying that, well, it's porn. No, hentai is porn. Anime is not porn. Hentai is porn. You really want to get into this argument? Go ask an otaku. Go ask an anime fan. Go ask somebody that actually knows what they're doing. But you have the mainstream media that basically goes, well, it's porn. You have parents of kids that are trying to get anime banned in the U.S. because, well, it's objectifying women. Their breasts are extremely large. Have you looked at action figures lately in the children's aisle of a toy, st of a toy store or even a department store? You have figures with boobs that are larger than anything. You have figures that are guys that are bulked out like they're on steroids. My mom made a comment to me once when I found an article about some lady that said that action figures today are too busty for her appeal. She said that they should make them more appealing to women. My mom goes, when she was growing up, they were happy if the dolls were anatomically correct. Well, let's check the anatomy. Well, let's check the um, anatomy of these newer figures, shall we? Huh? Okay. Well, the uh, ones that you assume are girls have boobs, and yeah, okay, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, the guy ones, yeah, they kind of seem like it. Now, I may be wrong, but yeah, th there's they're fitting what the character looks like on the show. They're not like a bulked out, roided out. Yeah, you know, I just. I'm like the Kool-Aid man. I'm like one of those bodybuilders on the beach every Sunday morning. I'm just, yeah. No. So, that's why people are flipping out over anime. Because they're thinking that it's porn. Just because, oh, well, we have this. So, you come up with a list like this. And some of the ones on here, I wouldn't even recommend. If you're talking about somebody that's new to the genre, you're liable to be talking about grade schoolers. Or middle schoolers. And those are not ones that I would be showing Death Note to. Come on. Think a little bit here, people. Think. All right. Moving off of the Inverse.com article, um, there's an anime film in Japan, and I have the article here printed out, at least the text from it. Uh, Makoto Shinkai's Your Name. Anime film earns 10 billion yen in 28 days. That's right. 10 billion yen. Yes, I just did the Dr. No thing. Billion. Yeah. So, it earns 10 billion yen in 28 days. It is the first non-Ghibli, non-Miyazaki anime film to do so. Uh, first off, congratulations. I, I mean that. That is huge. Uh, my hat is off to you. Wow. That is huge. 10 billion yen uh, in a, about a month. Nice. Uh, if memory serves, Makoto Shinkai is also the one that did the film 5 centimeters per second, if I remember that right from a previous article I read about this, which was a good movie. I will admit that. I watched that. 
I liked it. I thought it was very well done. Uh, a little confusing, but I liked it. But yeah, it comes out to about $98 million. That's not bad. Uh, after 28 days. That's really not bad. Especially for an animated film. That's not bad. I mean, yeah, okay, we're not talking gangbusters here. But yeah, you're converting yen to U.S. dollars. Yeah, come on. That's going to make a difference here. There is a big conversion rate. So... Yeah, uh, let's see here. The film has sold more than 7.7 .7 million tickets as of Wednesday, and it's ranked number one for its first four weeks in theaters. That's cool. Uh, it's the first anime film since 2013 to earn the 10 billion yen mark, and it's the first film not made by Studio Ghibli or Hayao Miyazaki to accomplish it. Uh, Ghibli and Miyazaki's 2013 film, The Wind Rises, another one I would recommend over Death Note, by the way. Um... Earned uh, $12.02 billion, which came out to about $123.5 million at the time. Uh, and it's the only anime film to, own, to earn over $10 billion at the Japanese box office. The only ones that ever do so are Ghibli Miyazaki's uh, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, Princess Mononoke, Ponyo, and The Wind Rises. Uh, out of that list, like I said, Princess Mononoke and Howl's Moving Castle, I would kind of stick away from. Ponyo and Spirited Away, I would... Ghost, I would recommend, and The Wind Rises. So, yeah. Uh, not really bad. So, it's pretty cool. I recommend it. Uh, the film held its world premiere on July 3rd in Los Angeles during Anime Expo. It's slated to open in 85 countries and regions. Uh, I'm not really going to do the film story here. If you want to read about that, go ahead. It's basically a story about miracles and love. It revolves around two people. So, yeah, it, it's a decent... It's a decent story. I would highly recommend checking it out if you get a chance to. And, yeah, so that is huge. Uh, 10 billion yen. And it's a non-Ghibli movie to do so. So, there you go, Miyazaki. Start coming up with a new movie now. See if you can't regain your title. Let's have a little turf battle between you and uh, another creator over there in Japan. And let us, the fans, be the judges. Now, that'd be pretty cool. All right. Time to take a trip back in my TARDIS in the Wayback Machine. So, uh... You know what? Uh, I'll just take the TARDIS this time. Okay, let's go back to the days of the N64. How'd you like that, by the way? I've been practicing that all week. Uh, let's go back to the days of the N64. Conker's Bad Fur Day was a game that came out near the end of the N64's lifespan. Uh, yeah, sad, sad day. And it's a game that if I would have had a uh, Nintendo 64 when I was growing up, my mom would have yanked that cartridge out and just destroyed it. Um, it's basically a game about a squirrel that goes around solving problems and interacting with a whole bunch of weird oddities. You have a giant mountain of shit called the Great Mighty Pooh, which sings, by the way. The song has been stuck in my head all week. You have a sunflower with a huge, huge rack. You have a... I want to say giant doofus like Cyclops guy, but he's only he has two eyes, uh, with a giant bone that basically you have to pants, and many other things, including but not limited to a few things that I think they could have been sued over. Uh, I think Ridley Scott could have sued them over the alien at the end of the game. Um, you have a D-Day reference, unless that was just for uh, the re the live and reloaded one. I'm not sure. I never got a chance to play it. I've mostly been watching videos of it all week and watching this going, I wish I could have had this game when I was a kid. Then I immediately think, no, nope, my mom would have destroyed this. She would have yanked it out of the system. She would have smashed it with her foot, and I would have never seen it again. But it is definitely a sweet, sweet game. Uh, if you get a chance to... If you have, let me put it this way, if you have a copy of it, uh, hold on to it, because it's worth something, not a lot, but it's worth something, play it. If you don't, look up a walkthrough or a let's play of it on YouTube. Uh, it is really well done. It is really great, really wonderful, and I, I it's just so cool. I would have never been allowed to play it, though. That sunflower with the huge rack that you have to bounce on then to get a lot of cash in a small alcove. I think is where my mom would have lost it. If not, she would have lost it at the Great Mighty Pooh, the Great Mighty Pooh 
hurling balls of shit at me. I think that's where she might have really lost it. Now, I think that was before, but I'm not sure. Because, like I said, I never had a chance to play because I didn't have the system. Now, that would have been cool if they would have released that for the GameCube. That would have been a really great title. I would have probably got it then. But, yeah, you know, you never know. Some good stuff's good, some stuff's bad, but my mom would have destroyed that. This portion of the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast is brought to you once again by A-Roads 2012 on eBay. For all your trading card and oddity needs, check out A-Roads 2012 on eBay. All right, so Sailor Moon Crystal's been out for a while. I think they're starting their final arc or they're into the new arc. I don't really know. I don't care anymore. Let me just put it like that. I don't care anymore. Uh, And I mean that for a good reason. Mostly because... Uh, I saw the opening for it, and it is basically 100% male-hating propaganda. And I mean that. If you listen, if you watch it with the subtitles, it is 100% male-hating propaganda. And I mean it. Really really read those uh, subtitles. It is male-hating propaganda. And I double-checked the translation, and it's right on the money. It is male-hating propaganda. But I'm going to talk about the original Sailor Moon. The good Sailor Moon. The one that was out back in the 90s on TV here in the U.S. Because there was a Sailor Scout that I had a huge crush on. No, I did not like Sailor Moon. I thought she was stuck up. No, it was not Sailor Mercury. It was not Sailor Venus. And it was not Sailor Mars. And I sure as hell did not like Sailors Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune. Nope. The one that I liked was Sailor Jupiter. That's right. I liked Sailor Jupiter. I had a crush on her. I will admit that. Mostly because she was the tallest one of the group. I was the tallest one in my class. She was always kind to people. I tried being nice to people. It never panned out well for me. And a few other things. But all in all, I had a huge crush on her. She's one of the best of the original Sailor Scouts. Uh, And I did say five Sailor Scouts. I meant to say four because you can't really count Sailor Moon. Unless you want to count the chibi one, which I think was just a cheap way to extend the series a little while, but that's my opinion. Uh, But yeah, so Sailor Moon, to me, was always stuck up like she's too good for everybody. You have Sailor Mercury, who's more focused on her studies and everything else. I'm fine with that, but then unless you can have an intelligent conversation with her, she's too smart for you and there's no point. Sailor Venus is boy crazy, and she's liable to leave your ass and dump you for somebody else. Uh, There was no Sailor Earth, which really kind of pissed me off there. Uh, So I guess Sailor Moon was supposed to be Sailor Earth, I guess. No, why wasn't there a Sailor Earth? Come on. Uh, Sailor Mars, to me, was uh, way, way too full of herself with her pride. Uh, I don't remember there being a Sailor Saturn, but uh, I think there was. I just don't remember it, and I really do think there was. I really have to double-check. Like I said, I haven't watched it in a while, but I said out of the original. But Sailor Jupiter was my favorite. Uh, She always was. Uh, When she took the stage in an episode, I was on the edge of my seat. I'm watching it like, wow, she's really cool. And I was watching it the whole time. So, yep, I... I am a fan of Sailor Jupiter. She's she's one of the best. Because like I said, she was strong. She was kind. She basically did not put up with anybody's shit. And if you think about it, out of the Sailor Scouts, she was the one that actually had the most useful power. She could control lightning and thunder. She controlled electricity. What did Sailor Mercury do? Oh, okay, I, I can shoot bubbles. Oh, wow. Sailor Venus has a love chain. Who cares? Mars can shoot fire. Wow. I control lightning. Hey, we're out of power in the city. Hold on a second. Jupiter, thunder, flash. There you go. How's that? I can watch my head tie again. <laughs> but yeah, she was nice. And all that stuff. But yeah, she's uh, one of the best out of the original Sailor Scouts. At least in my opinion, she always will be. So anybody out there that thinks otherwise eh, it's your own opinion it's it's mine it's in my opinion anyway but she's the coolest she's the best all right time for a new segment 
Mom's Quirky Questions. I was going to have a neat little jingle for this, but I didn't write it down. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to start doing that more often. Um, my mom is not technologically inclined. Uh, now, don't get me wrong when I say that. She can search the internet. She can do Facebook. She can send emails. More than I could say for some of my family members. But this week, she came to me with a question. Now, let me set up, now, let me set up the entire event here, and you'll kind of understand where I'm coming from. It's Tuesday afternoon, and my mom is sort of, my mom's back working on dinner, and all of a sudden she comes and she goes, oh, that reminds me, I have a question for you. Now, I'm 27, my mom and I help take care of my grandfather, so she's making dinner for us, and she just comes out of the blue, oh, that's right, I have a question I want to ask you, and I'm going, okay, okay. What is it? And she didn't hear me right away because she was back. I was out a little further away from her with the fan going uh, for our stove. She didn't hear me, so I got a little closer. I said, okay, what do you want to ask? What's the question? She goes, she, she goes so nice and calmly, like there's nothing wrong. How do I subscribe to YouTube? For a split second, I felt the earth stop. I felt my body and mind separate. And then I came back and I go, what? She goes, well, let me be more specific. How do I subscribe to a channel on YouTube? I am thinking to myself, I can answer this question. And I don't even have to complicate it. I just go, hold on a second. I'll answer that for you in the form of a picture. It'll be much easier. I go and I draw the subscribe button. I spelled it wrong, but I drew the subscribe button. I said, it's a red button. looks like this. You click that, you're subscribed. There you go. Because she has a Gmail account, so she has an instant YouTube account. So it's like, here you go. You have it. You're subscribed. Yeah. So, uh, there was that. Now, like I said, my mom's technologically inclined. Because if she keeps reminding me every time she has a technological question and I make a comment of, well, what would you do if I wasn't here? Well, Andy, the biggest thing that I had growing up was an electric typewriter. I have to keep remembering that every time I have to help her solve a computer issue. She had, grew up with electric typewriters. I grew up with a computer. So that was Mom's Quirky Questions. Hopefully I'll have more of them I can share. I thought that one was quirky. All right. Like last week, I have an anime recommendation. A anime re re recommendation. All right, if you like mech-based anime series, and I mean we're talking balls to the walls, machines beating the living snot out of each other, I have a good one for you. Now, yes, it does have some fan service, but it you can look past it because it fits the plot of it. It really does. Mostly because the two mechanics are sexually active and it makes for some good off-putting humor to side out with the massive amount of drama that this series will give you. And I'm talking, of course, about Godanner. Yep, that's right. Godanner. It is a great five-volume series that takes place, I kind of want to say in an alternate universe, uh, creatures known as mimetic beasts invade the Earth, and they think that they've destroyed them when the mimetic beasts disappear, only for them to return when Go and Anna are trying to get married. The entire series revolves around Go as they try fighting the mimetic beasts and trying to solve a tremendous, I should say, mystery... Ooh, uh, that comes about in the first episode. So, yeah, there's that. It is a good series. I recommend it. Like I said, five volumes. Not bad. Really good. I recommend it. So, yeah. No, I seriously do. I, I recommend that one. That is my anime recommendation of the week. Now, if you want a second one, I actually have a second recommendation, too. Uh, same thing, though. It's mech-based. Uh, Code Geass is actually a pretty good series. In fact, to be it, the main character, Lelouch V. Britannia, is voiced by a very talented voice actor who used to be a Power Ranger, Johnny Young Bosch. So, yeah, there's your anime recommendations for the week. All right. Well, the timer tells me that I've been on here for almost an hour. Holy crap, I can't believe I went through that. I hope I didn't half-ass anything, but I don't think I did. So, yep. So... 
this week, like I said, has been a tremendous amount of fun for me. It went by really fast. Uh, next week, don't know yet, uh, because something exciting uh, happens, happened to me tonight, and something will be changing tomorrow. So uh, I don't know if uh, the regular schedule for my podcast will be affected or not. I'll have to check. If not, I will see. If not, I will talk with everyone again on the... On October 1st, for the 5th episode of the podcast, where I'll be talking about whatever piques my interest this week and whatever I find and whatever limps to the barn. So, for the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast, my name is Andrew Rhodes. Like I said, you can follow me on Twitter at Otake Rhodes. Be sure to check out my eBay page, all lowercase, A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. And don't forget, the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast does have an email. Uh, if you have any topics you'd like me to discuss on the show, anything anime related, video game related, or just something in general that piques my interest, hey, you never know. I'll let you know if it does or not. You can send it to me. It doesn't hurt. You can send any of those to acrpodcast at gmail.com. That's all lowercase, by the way. acrpodcast at gmail.com. So, like I said, for the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast, my name is Andrew Rhodes, and until we meet again, as Tom would say on Toonami, stay gold.